If you think about moving to the East Bay, whether it's for work, pleasure, or academic reasons, this video will give you all the information and advice you need so that you can be as prepared as possible. The one thing about moving to the East Bay, it can definitely be overwhelming. When I first landed in California, I ended up in the East Bay, Hayward to be exact. Then, I lived in the city for a short while while I was going to school at USF. After graduating, I moved up and down the peninsula and stayed there for several years. When it came time to buy a house, we decided that we wanted to live in the East Bay. And my wife had no idea what it's like to live here. She grew up in San Francisco and the peninsula. So to her, this might as well have been Sanger, Texas. So finding that right area or place to live can be difficult. This place is huge, so what I want to do is I'm going to bring up a map. I'm going to be showing you all these different areas so by the end of this video, you'll get a good visual representation. You'll see how far things are from each other and you'll have a great idea or great starting point when it comes to your search for a place to call your home here in the East Bay. You're going to be surprised how far away things are can be sometimes. So moving to the East Bay is all about location and lifestyle. What do you like to do? What do you need to be close to? Where are you working? Do you wanna live closer to the bay or inland? These are just some of the criteria you might wanna think about. This is going to be a long video. It will be like a mini series. So make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified once I finish the other videos. I'll show you some of the different communities, master plan communities, acreage estates, you name it. Let's start with the 880 corridor as well as the 580 corridor. Corridor. The cities along 880 corridor are as follows Oakland, Alameda, San Leandro, San Lorenzo, Hayward, Castro Valley along 238 and 580, Union City, Fremont, and Newark. These cities are the closest to the bay. Being closer to the bay, they tend to be a little cooler. You get that bay breeze or fog. So definitely cooler mornings and evenings. They are also closer to San Francisco and the peninsula and Silicon Valley. So if you're looking or wanting to have quick access to those places, this might be a good fit. All the cities except for San Lorenzo and Newark has a BART stop, which make them ideal for those that work in areas serviced by BART. Oakland is the largest city in Alameda County and serves as one of the major transportation, commercial, and cultural hub for the San Francisco Bay Area. When it comes to culture and entertainment, Oakland has a vibrant arts and cultural scene. The city is known for its music heritage, particularly in jazz, blues, and hip hop. It is home to several renowned institutions like the Oakland Museum of California, the Oakland Symphony, and the Chabot and Science Center. The Fox Theater and Paramount Theater are iconic venues for live performances. Oakland has a lot to offer when it comes to the outdoors. The city has numerous parks, including the expansive Redwood Regional Park and Joaquin Miller Park, which provide hiking and biking trails, picnic areas, and scenic views. Lake Merritt, located in the heart of the city, is a popular spot for walking, boating, and picnicking, and also cycling. Real estate in Oakland, just like every other place in the U.S., has experienced significant changes and trends over the years. Oakland's housing market has been characterized by high demand and rising prices. The city's proximity to San Francisco, limited housing supply, and a growing population have contributed to increase competition among buyers. As a result, home prices have been steadily rising. One thing I wanna add when it comes to prices, Oakland has some neighborhoods or areas that has single family homes with prices below the US median home price. The city features diverse neighborhoods with distinct architectural styles, ranging from Victorian and craftsman homes to modern developments. Oakland has a range of neighborhoods, each with its own unique character and amenities. Some popular neighborhoods include Rockridge, Temescal, Montclair, Grand Lake, and Lake Merritt, just to name a few. The desirability and prices of homes can vary significantly across different neighborhoods. Oakland has seen several development projects aimed at revitalizing certain areas and bringing new housing and commercial spaces. Projects such as the Brooklyn Basin, Uptown, Jack London Square have transformed industrial areas into vibrant mixed-use communities. When it comes to schools, I highly encourage you to check out greatschools.org to find out specific rankings for specific schools serving the area. The quality of K-12 schools in the Oakland Unified School District or OUSD varies widely. Some schools are highly rated, 
while others are struggling. The district as a whole has a graduation rate of 75%, which is below the state average of 82%. Oakland has a higher crime rate than most cities in the United States. According to the FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting Program, violent crime in Oakland is more than three times the national average and the city's property crime rate was also high, more than twice the national average. Next up is Alameda. Alameda is adjacent to the city of Oakland. It is separated from Oakland by the Oakland Estuary and connected to the mainland by bridges. Alameda enjoys a waterfront location with beautiful views of the San Francisco Bay. Alameda is unique in that it is an island city. The island's geography gives it a distinct atmosphere with tree-lined streets, quiet neighborhoods, and a relaxed coastal vibe. The island offers beautiful beaches, marinas, and waterfront parks, providing ample opportunities for outdoor recreation and water activities. Oakland features a mix of housing options including Victorian-era houses, craftsman-style houses, apartments, and condos. The city is known for its well-preserved historic homes and picturesque neighborhoods. Alameda is home to numerous parks and green spaces, providing residents and visitors with opportunities for outdoor activities. Crown Memorial State Park, Robert W. Crown Memorial State Beach, and Crab Cove are popular destinations for picnicking, beachcombing, bird watching, and water sports. When it comes to schools, the Alameda Unified School District is generally considered to be a good school district. It is consistently ranked among the best school districts in California and it has a graduation rate of 91% which is above the state average of 82%. AUSD has a strong academic reputation and it offers a variety of programs to students, including STEM education, arts education, and project-based learning. The district also has a diverse student body, which helps create a welcoming and inclusive environment. Just like any district, AUSD is not without its challenges. The district is facing budget cuts and it has had to make some difficult decisions about how to allocate resources. Overall, AUSD is a good school district with a strong academic reputation. There used to be a naval base in Alameda named Alameda Naval Air Station. It's now known as Alameda Point. Alameda Point is a notable area within the city. It is being transformed into a mixed-use development that includes housing, commercial spaces, and recreational amenities. Alameda Point is also home to the USS Hornet Museum, a retired aircraft carrier that now serves as a museum and event space. According to the FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting Program, Alameda's violent crime in 2022 was lower than the national average. The city's property crime was also below the national average. Some neighborhoods are much safer than others. For example, the downtown Alameda and Bay Farm Island neighborhoods have relatively low crime rates while East Alameda and West Alameda neighborhoods have much higher crime rates. Alameda offers a close-knit community feel, a rich history, and a beautiful coastal setting, making it an attractive place to live. These two cities are the closest to San Francisco when it comes to the cities in the 880 corridor. Access to the city via BART or car is good. In the case of Alameda, there is even the option of riding the ferry to San Francisco. One thing I would like to note is that Oakland is huge. So if you're looking into places by Highway 13 or the Montclair area, it's quite a ways to get into San Francisco or access to BART is not that easy. Next up is San Leandro. If you work in Silicon Valley, San Leandro might be the furthest city north that you might want to consider if you are concerned about commuting. The 880 is a nightmare during rush hour. That being said, San Leandro's location is advantageous for commuters as it is strategically positioned near major transportation routes and has an easy access to neighboring cities such as Oakland, San Francisco, and cities in the peninsula, as well as Silicon Valley. The presence of BART allows for convenient travel to various destinations. They have two stations. San Leandro is home to several distinct neighborhoods, each with its own character and amenities. Here are some notable neighborhoods in San Leandro. Bayo Vista, located in the hills of San Leandro. Bayo Vista offers breathtaking views of San Francisco Bay and the surrounding area. The neighborhood features a mix of mid-century and contemporary homes and is known for its quiet streets and well-maintained properties. Washington Manor. Washington Manor is a popular residential neighborhood characterized by single-family homes. It has a suburban feel with tree-lined streets, 
parks and local schools. Broadmoor. Broadmoor is a well-established neighborhood with a mix of architectural styles, including mid-century homes and newer developments. It is centrally located and offers easy access to amenities such as schools, parks, and shopping centers. Estadillo Estates. I actually love Estadillo Estates. It is known for its historic charm and beautiful architecture. The neighborhood features a collection of well-preserved Spanish Revival, Tudor, and Craftsman-style homes. It offers a sense of elegance and a close-knit community. Kind of like if you're familiar bur with Burlingame, it has that feel. Mulford Gardens. Mulford Gardens is a residential neighborhood with a mix of single-family homes and apartments. It has a diverse community and offers convenient access to local schools, parks, and shopping centers. Marina Fair. Marina Fair is a waterfront neighborhood situated along the San Leandro Marina. It features a mix of residential properties, including condos and townhomes. Residents enjoy the proximity to the marina, parks, and recreational activities. Assumption Parish. Assumption Parish is a predominantly residential neighborhood with a strong sense of community. It is home to the Assumption School and Assumption Catholic Church, which are central to the neighborhood's identity. When it comes to school districts, the San Leandro Unified School District is generally considered to be a good school district. In 2023, the district was ranked 63 out of 1,000 school districts in California by Niche.com. The district has a graduation rate of 90%, which is above the state average of 82%. According to the FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting Program, San Leandro's violent crime rate was below the national average. The city's property crime rate was also below the national average. Next is the town of San Lorenzo. When we were first looking for homes in the East Bay, San Lorenzo was one of the cities that we considered. I love the tree-lined streets of San Lorenzo. Very quaint looking. San Lorenzo is not a small town in the traditional sense. It has a population of about 30,000 people. San Lorenzo does have a small town feel. The community is close-knit and there is a sense of community pride. There are also a number of small businesses in San Lorenzo which contributes to that small town atmosphere. The K-12 schools in San Lorenzo are generally considered to be good. According to Niche.com, San Lorenzo Unified School District is ranked number 3 out of 31 school districts in Alameda County. The district has an overall grade of A- and is ranked 641 out of 10,745 school districts nationwide. San Lorenzo has a crime rate that is higher than the national average, but it's not considered to be a dangerous city. According to NeighborhoodScout.com, the chance of becoming a victim of either a violent or property crime in San Lorenzo is 1 in 38. This is higher than the national average of 1 in 45. Side note, I've never felt unsafe in San Lorenzo, ever. Moving on to Hey Weird. I probably consider this my hometown since this is where I landed when I moved to California. When I told my friends from the peninsula that I lived in Hayward, I can tell they looked down on me primarily because their reactions were all the same. And that was, you live in Hayward? Isn't that dangerous? Ignorant bastards. Hayward has a bad reputation for a number of reasons, one of which is crime. Hayward has a higher crime rate than some other Bay Area cities. According to NeighborhoodScout.com, the chance of becoming a victim of either a violent or property crime in Hayward is 1 in 34. This is higher than the national average of 1 in 45. Hayward also, doesn't get a good reputation when it comes to schools. According to Niche.com, Hayward Unified School District is ranked number 53 out of 92 school districts in Alameda County. The district has an overall grade of C and is ranked 3,413 out of 10,745 school districts nationwide. Living in Hayward is not bad at all. It has a lot to offer residents, including affordability. Yes. I said affordability. Hayward is a relatively affordable city, especially compared to other cities in the Bay Area. Diversity. Hayward is, is a diverse city and with a large immigrant population. This diversity is reflected in the city's culture and cuisine. I forgot to mention this earlier when I was uh, talking about San Lorenzo. When it comes to food, San Lorenzo doesn't have a lot to offer. Uh, you know, in terms of selection, Hayward has a lot. Location-wise, to me, Castro Valley and Hayward are the two cities that are in the center of the Bay Area. You can get pretty much anywhere within 30 to 45 minutes, whether it's in San Francisco, 
the peninsula or Silicon Valley. Truly a plus if you ask me. When it comes to housing selection, there are a ton of options. You want in a gated community that has a top rated golf club? Check. Do you want views of the bay? Check. Or your budget is a little bit more modest? Check. Here's another plus for me. With Hayward as well as San Lorenzo, you can take Hesperian Boulevard and then go to the back roads to avoid traffic if you're taking the San Mateo Bridge during rush hour. I used to do this when I lived in Hayward and worked in South City. Let's veer a little bit off of 880 and hop onto 238 towards 580 and go to Castro Valley. Living in Castro Valley offers a suburban and family-friendly experience. Here are some key aspects of what it's like living in Castro Valley. Castro Valley is surrounded by beautiful natural landscapes, including the scenic Redwood Road and the nearby Lake Chabot Regional Park. These areas provide opportunities for outdoor activities such as hiking, biking, fishing, boating, and picnicking. Castro Valley is home to highly regarded schools. The district has received recognition for academic achievements, extracurricular activities, and a focus on student success. The Castro Valley food scene has definitely improved the last five years. A variety of different restaurants and cuisines have opened. The Castro Valley Marketplace has become the go-to location. In terms of community events, Castro Valley hosts several community events throughout the year, including parades, festival, and the weekly Saturday Farmer's Market. These events bring residents together and foster a sense of community spirit and engagement. Location, location, location. As I have mentioned earlier, Castro Valley and Hayward are centrally located and within 30 to 40 minutes of San Francisco, the peninsula, and Silicon Valley. You want to go to Napa? It's just an hour away. Healthcare facilities. Castro Valley has access to quality healthcare facilities, including Eden Medical Center. The hospital offers a range of medical services, and it's known for its specialized care in various fields. Safety. Castro Valley is gener generally has a reputation for being a safe community with a lower crime rate compared to some parts of the Bay Area. Okay, next up is Union City. I look at Union City as a step up to Hayward, and that's pretty much in everything. Housing in neighborhoods are overall better. Crime is better also. Schools are better. Definitely in the food cuisine, selection is much more. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth video of Hayward versus Union City down the line, so I'll just leave it at that for now. We move on to Fremont. Fremont has been the most popular city to move to for people working in Silicon Valley ever since I started in real estate. With its location right across from Menlo Park and Palo Alto and the rest of Silicon Valley, it has been the go-to city for workers from Silicon Valley not wanting or sometimes can't afford prices in the peninsula in the South Bay. When you look at it that way, Fremont is actually affordable. And yes, I said Fremont is affordable and I can prove it to you. As of this video, the median home price for a detached home in Fremont was 1.3 million. In Menlo Park, that's 2.8. In Palo Alto, 3.1. So, affordable. From your C-level executives to your lowly $300,000 a year engineer, Fremont has you covered. Here are some of the more popular neighborhoods in Fremont. Mission San Jose, Ardenwood, Warm Springs, Niles, Glenmore, Irvington, Centerville. Another reason Fremont is popular, excellent schools. Fremont is renowned for its top-rated public schools. The Fremont Unified School District operates a number of highly regarded schools with a strong emphasis on academics and extracurricular activities. The district consistently achieves high test scores and graduation rates. Fremont also offers an abundance of parks, open spaces, and recreational facilities. From large regional parks like Central Park and Lake Elizabeth, to neighborhood parks and trails, residents have ample opportunities for outdoor activities, sports, picnicking, and leisurely walks. Fremont also has a variety of shopping centers and retail districts that cater to a diverse taste and preferences. Popular shopping destinations include Pacific Commons, Fremont Hub, just to name a few. The city also boasts a vibrant culinary scene featuring a wide range of restaurants offering cuisines from around the world. We go to Fremont a lot to eat. Businesses and job opportunities. Fremont is home to a thriving business community, including companies in technology, manufacturing, 
and biotech sectors. The presence of numerous job opportunities within the city and its proximity to other major employment centers make it an attractive choice for professionals and entrepreneurs. Fremont consistently ranks among the best places to live in the Bay Area and the United States. The city places a strong emphasis on community safety, well-maintained infrastructure, and neighborhood development. It offers a high quality of life with a balance of suburban living, access to amenities, and a family-friendly atmosphere. And finally, Newark. For years, most of the clients that I've helped that are looking for homes in Fremont would never consider Newark. The perception of whether Newark is not as good as Fremont can vary depending on individual preferences and priorities. Both cities have their own unique characteristics and offerings. While some people may prefer Fremont over Newark for various reasons, it does not necessarily mean that Newark is inherently inferior. Newark has become an increasingly popular place to live in the East Bay. If I said Fremont was affordable, Newark is more affordable when it comes to real estate. The median price in Newark is $1.1 million. When it comes to crime, Newark has a higher crime rate that is higher than the national average. According to NeighborhoodScout.com, the violent crime rate in Newark is 3 per 1,000 residents, while the property crime rate is 34 per 1,000 residents. This means that there is a 1 in 27 chance of becoming a victim of either a violent crime or property crime in Newark. The academic performance of the Newark Unified School District is generally good. According to the California Department of Education, the district have met or exceeded state standards in all subject areas in recent years. Newark's location to the Dumbarton Bridge makes it a great place to live for people commuting into Menlo Park, which is just across the bridge. Heck, you can even bike to work if you wanted to. It definitely cuts down on long commute times. That is it for the 880 Corridor Cities. Please do stick around, meaning subscribe to the channel if you want to see the following videos into other communities in the East Bay. There are still so much to tackle. Next up, we go on to the 80 East and look at the cities in Emeryville, Berkeley, all the way to Crockett. Until then, if you have any questions or are selling or buying real estate, give us a call, a text, or an email. Days, nights, weekend, we would love to help you out.